Hello everyone, my name is TJ and I'm a self-taught software engineer and in this video I'll be sharing with you how I took my salary from $37,500 a year to over three times that by teaching myself how to code. So make sure to subscribe as I'll be posting coding tutorials and a lot of other tips and resources that you can use to start teaching yourself how to code as well. This video is broken into different sections, so check the description below for different timestamps in case you want to skip ahead. Now, a quick background on me. I was born in Nigeria, but I grew up in Dallas, Texas. I did my undergraduate at UT Austin, where I got a bachelor's degree in nutritional science. And after that, I went to Arizona State University and I got a graduate business degree. Now. All of those degrees are pretty much useless outside of getting me into a lot of student loan debt and it was the stress and pressure of being broke that ultimately drove me to start teaching myself how to code. Before I started teaching myself how to code, I was working as a, as a business analyst for a small tech company in Austin where I was making $37,500 a year. So each paycheck was about $1,200 $1, every two weeks but my student loan payments was about a thousand dollars a month so after paying my student loans I was pretty much just living off of one paycheck the main turning point happened for me when I got a promotion so I got promoted from business analyst to senior business analyst but my salary didn't get a promotion so I went back and forth with the manager asking for a raise and the manager ultimately gave me a raise and my salary went from $37,500 to $39,998 a year. And something about them leaving out the extra $2 to make my salary $40,000 a year even, something about that just kind of really rubbed me the wrong way. And I knew right then and there that, that this salary was not going to help me to pay off my student loans quick enough or afford me the type of lifestyle that I wanted to live. And I decided that day that I was going to start teaching myself how to code. As soon as I made that choice, I called my friend that was a software engineer and I asked her, if I want to learn to build apps, what is the least amount of things that I need to know? So she immediately started to tell me about the difference between mobile apps and web apps, uh, front end versus back end, etc. But she also ultimately pointed me towards Ruby and Ruby on Rails as a beginner friendly language and framework to start with and she also told me to check out the course curriculum for different online coding boot camps to see what they were teaching their students so I did just that I found like general assembly and dev boot camp at the time which doesn't um, exist anymore but I requested the course curriculum for all of these coding boot camps and I used that to create my own coding curriculum using using a bunch of free online interactive tutorials to help teach me each topic. Now, my dream job at the time was to be a software developer at IBM, and, and, and I actually found, found a job post for that role, and I printed out that job posting, and I wrote on it, December 2016. That was the deadline that I gave myself to make a career switch from being a business analyst to being a software developer. So now, when it came to studying, I worked, I worked a full-time job from 9 to 5, and I would come home from work, and I would, I would eat and watch like an hour or two of like Suits or Mr. Robot. And after that, I would study all night until around 1 to 2 a.m. And then on the weekends, I spent a couple hours volunteering or going, or going to a tech event. Then I would be home just studying all day. And that was my schedule for a few months until I started to think that my full-time job was getting in the way. And I really wanted to, to just try to really go all in and study and, and learn how to code full time. My apartment lease was ending in October and I really wanted to use the last few months in my apartment to study coding full time. So I quit my job in July after I saved up enough money to pay the rest of my rent and to also have a few left over just to kind of eat and buy gas for, for at least a couple months. Now at the time, two of my sisters lived in Austin and my girlfriend had just moved to Austin as well so I knew that I would have a place to live. By the time I quit my job in July, I was already building basic apps on my own but I kind of felt stuck and I wasn't really sure what to do next. 
So I talked to a friend about it and this friend convinced me to attend a coding boot camp. So I took out a loan and I went to dev boot camp. Now, the point of a coding boot camp is to help absolute beginners go from knowing nothing to being able to build basic web apps on their own. But I was already doing that before I got to the boot camp. So I spent most of my time at the coding boot camp just working on personal projects for my portfolio, especially since I had teachers to talk to that can now quickly help me with things. I finished Dev Boot Camp in September and I and I immediately switched from learning to code and working on projects to studying for interviews and job searching full time. I spent the first half of my day applying to jobs and the second half studying for interviews and I treated that like my nine to five. Important note, the whole time that I was teaching myself how to code, I was actually tweeting about my progress on Twitter and this engineering manager has started following me and was impressed by my progress and this is how I got my first job offer from a random stranger on Twitter that just so happened to be following me talking about my progress. Now this, now this offer was a verbal offer for a software developer apprenticeship that would pay $75,000 a year. But this offer would not be confirmed until December and even if it was confirmed, the job wouldn't start until January. Now mind you, this is September and I'm broken, unemployed and bouncing between my sister and my girlfriend's place. So needless to say, I kept job searching. Now, my first official offer letter came November 2016 when I got offered a role to work as a test automation developer for a major insurance company in Scottsdale, Arizona. The salary for this role was $59,000 a year, but outside of me having to move to Arizona, this job also wouldn't start until January. But at the time, I was starting to get stressed and kind of discouraged with the whole job search, so I immediately accepted the first official offer letter that I got. Now keep in mind my goal was to make a career switch by December 2016 so for me to have accepted a job offer now in November 2016 I felt kinda happy you know I felt a little bit relieved that I had somewhat achieved my goal well not somewhat but but had achieved my goal uh, and I just kinda took a couple days to breathe easier now, shortly after accepting my full-time job offer to start in January, I also got another offer for a one-month apprenticeship with a meal delivery startup in Silicon Valley. Now, mind you, even though I had a full-time job offer to start in January, I was still broke and unemployed until I started working. So, having this offer in December was perfect. So. I didn't end up working at either of those two companies because what had happened was the week before I was going to fly out to Silicon Valley, I I had booked my plane ticket for Saturday. And the Wednesday before before that, I just casually reached out to to a local entrepreneur or startup founder in Austin just to kind of network with them and see what they were working on and just and just overall meet them before I moved to Silicon Valley and then moved to Arizona. And 20 minutes into that meeting, this guy offered me a full-time software engineering role to start in December for $75,000 a year. I don't know about you, but I knew that I would be a fool to not accept that offer because one, I got to stay in Austin with my sisters and my girlfriend. And two, in Texas, you don't pay state income tax like you do in, in Arizona and three seventy five thousand dollars was twice what I was making before working as a business analyst so I immediately accepted the offer and I started working for that startup and that startup was a cybersecurity startup in Austin that actually just got acquired a few months ago so now that I had a full-time job working as a software engineer things were things were a bit easier because the hardest part about this whole journey is getting that first job. But once you get that first job, recruiters are going to be messaging you like almost every day, right? So what happened with me in terms of how I got to six figures was I ended up changing jobs every 11 months. 
I knew that the best way for me to significantly increase my income was to change jobs. Getting a raise wasn't really it because the average raise is between three, three to five percent, but I really wanted to make six figures. So what happened was I left my first job after 11 months and I got another job. So I went from making 75000 to around $90,000. And then I left that job after 11 months where I went from making 90000 to six figures. And after that, I started to kind of take on part-time work, helping to mentor uh, coding boot camp students. And, and the income from that took my salary or took my total compensation to over $120,000 a year. And that's how I ended up going from $37,000 a year to six figures in less than three years. So thank you so much for listening to my story. If you want to if you want to hear more about my experience, especially my experience uh, working for a startup that was in Techstars and then working for a startup that ended up in Shark Tank, which which is actually kind of crazy. Um, subscribe and keep up because I'll be posting those videos to kind of talk about the difference between working for a tech star startup and working for a shark tank startup and just some of the different challenges that you face and I will also be posting coding tutorials to help to teach you guys how to start teaching yourself how to code as well so subscribe and see you later